Uh, good morning, my name is Chris Hoot. Um, that's Hoot like in Hooters without the ERS. That's how I help people explain and remember my name. Um, we'll talk about creativity today um, and talk about creativity and thinking about how it should change or how things are changing in the way we get to ideas. And I really wanted to be like on purpose, be a little bit provocative in the name of the theme when I talk about the creative machine, because likely it's not a machine. But if people that were here, who was here last year? Just a raise of hands. Okay, not too many, that's great. Um, last year there was a slide uh, that talked about rewiring the creative process. And it was a conclusion slide. It was sort of like for everything that we discussed, that probably um, what is probably necessary as a next step is that we look into how do we get to ideas? And how do we get to ideas differently knowing that the world is changing? And how much actually does need to change? And maybe it's not even a process. It's definitely not a machine, but maybe it's not even a process. We know that creativity and coming up with ideas is, is, a, is a messy project, right? It's, it's chaotic. It's, it takes probably one second to come up with a great idea. We just don't really know when that second will happen. We don't really know exactly what came uh, before and uh, how we'll proceed. So it's, it's, a, it's a tiny, magical, special thing. And yet, I think that with all of the transformation that is going on in the world, that we likely want to look into how that magical thing, coming up with ideas, is affected by all of those changes. You know, we cannot just stay, keep doing it the same way we did it before. The funny thing is, or I think it's funny, or maybe it's even scary, but whenever you talk about transformation, people automatically assume or start thinking into technology. Um, it's like, um, the technology is what the transformation is all about. And it's a big driver for it, but it's not the same thing. Anybody knows how old this movie is? Any, any guess? When did you get it? 15. So it's, I thought people would probably say like 5 or 10, uh, but you indeed think it's older than it is. But it's 15 years old, and you can see already back then, it's just like every time when we imagine a future, We'll imagine a future where the technology is very present, where it's very visual. We almost see the code. It's very, you know, tangible. Um, and it's the thing we do. When we think about the future and about change and transformation, it automatically translates into technology for us. And I don't think necessarily that's true. We think about creativity and how it's changed, and automatically the conversation is about automating things, and it's about robots, and we think about the, how the creative process is literally delivering assets at uh, a multitude of speed. And what we get is something like this. I'm not sure if anybody's seen this, but this is a commercial. I think it was made by McCann. And again, no, uh, no disrespect for McCann in Japan. And this is created by an artificial intelligent creative director. Um, and I think we'd all agree there's very little idea in what you see here. So yes, there's a machine doing something, but we're not really sure what it is, and it's not the transformation we were talking about. Okay. What I think happens, what I think is the reason why we automatically get into this space of automation and robots when we talk about the future of how we do ideas, is because ideas on their own are really fragile. I don't know if anybody listens to the uh, Talking to Ourselves podcast, uh, which is uh, uh, sponsored by the One Club. Um, uh, he had a, a session with Jerry Graff, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about how when he reviewed ideas, he would put ideas on the wall, and then he would take the ideas down, the ones that he didn't like. And his creative partner said, can you please not do that anymore? Because by pulling it down, you put them on the floor and you're stepping on those ideas. And it hurts me. This is, this is what I, you know, I spend time in the night. And even if you don't like the ideas, you put them on the side, you put them on a the table, that's all fine. But don't put them on the floor because you'll stop in it and that hurts my feelings. Ideas are really fragile. It's something that we need to be careful for, that we need to protect. It's also what we do with clients. There's nothing as easy to kill as an idea. We need to make sure that we help, you know, give it oxygen so it can, it can come to life. And I think that's the, the notion that ideas are fragile is probably one of the reasons why we don't think too much about how the process of getting to an idea, why we want to change that, because we need to protect that little space that is so magical, that is really special. 
The thing is, though, that there's a lot of changes happening around us in our industry and just in how people work that we cannot ignore, and we need to think about how it influences um, how we get to ideas. There's some things like um, distributed workforce. I don't know if you know a company called Automatic. It's the company behind WordPress. They have a distributed workforce, meaning they have a couple of hundred people that work for them, and they work all over the world. Um, they have a, quite a few people that work out of San Francisco, but even they closed their San Francisco office, even though it was a really nice office with all of the amenities that you want, but because nobody ever showed up. This is not how they're structured. This is not how they work. That's not in their DNA. They really work as a distributed workforce. And so that is companies that you compete with, you know, where you attract talent, where not necessarily the person has to come to the office at 9, or even if you're flexible and you say you can come in at 11, or you can stay home for a day, they don't ever have to come in and they enable it all with their own tools. We have some things as collaborative thinking. I read this tweet the other day about a teacher who was amazed that she discovered that all of the students in class were taking notes in a shared Google Doc and then putting in questions and remarks and Wikipedia references, etc., in that doc. And you could almost argue that the notes that these students were taking collaboratively would probably be better than you know, what initially started out as the, the course on itself. So it's really interesting and something that old people like me don't think about when we think about school and think about the future of school. This is just very uh, much a normal thing that's happening. And then we see something in our industry as well, the in-house creative. So we're not even competing for that creative talent anymore as our own, as creative agencies or as design agencies. You know, clients are having creatives on board. And we could argue about the quality of the in-house uh, creative work, but you know, creatives are going there in some pretty exciting places. Um, we see obviously the consultancies, we see that the Googles and the Facebooks of this world are also hiring a lot of creative talent that we're competing with. So, that, how do we deal with all of that? And then there's the thing about time and money. So, the more we get into the billable hours discussion, the more we're, not, we're selling time rather than selling value. And I think it's really important that we keep recognizing that coming up with an idea and that creative power has a lot of value. And then we get clients or anybody to recognize that value, talk about that value, and that is our discussion. And not just talk about the time spent uh, on how that we worked on this. There is a thing called hybrid talent. This guy is a guy called Dries de Porter. He used to be a creative uh, at our agency. Uh, and unfortunately, we couldn't retain him because he is now f like making his money, spending 100% of his time on doing interactive art. Uh, you might know him. He did, uh, and if you don't, you got to download this. He uh, made an app called Die With Me, and the app is uh, is basically a chat application for your mobile phone, but that only works if you have less than 5% battery. So the people that you chat with are people around the world that are on a phone with less than 5% battery. Um, it's really interesting to get artists or people like this in your agency, um, but it's really hard for many agencies or many creative companies to apply these because we don't really know where to put them. They don't fit necessarily in either the art directors or the creative technologist or whatever the box. And we, even if we're liberal in our thinking, we still see those boxes that we need to fill in with talent because we know what we can expect from that box as to come out. And so we don't really know what to expect from a guy like Dries because we don't really understand what it is that he does. We only think it's really, really interesting and likely will contribute very interesting things uh, to the agency, and unfortunately for us, again, he's doing really interesting stuff for himself right now. And then there's everything around data, and again, I don't want this to be a data presentation, but I think we look at data all the time as something that talks about uh, insights, or where we look just into measurement as results, or it's related to whatever programmatic and automating things again. I think one of the really beautiful things about data is that's an incredible creative source um, you know, that, that will help us inspire, that actually will get to a different kind of ideas if we were to be willing to look at data from a creative point of view and see some of the value in there as well. But this is something that we need to uh, look at. And so for me today, 
was really, and what we're thinking about the theme, I thought this whole idea of how coming up with ideas and creativity, uh, how that should possibly change, or maybe not, how, what is the impact of the transformation that is going on around us? How does that impact how we come up with ideas? That was something like a really interesting question. And I thought when we build this structure of the day and the speakers, what I really wanted to do is sort of ask that question out loud and look into what is your opinion on what do you think needs to change, what needs to, cha what needs to stay, but, a, but have a discussion around that. And literally the speakers, and we you know, talked about the speakers and moving forward for the program, the discussion that we had uh, in between us was all about, I want to hear from you within the context of your organization, but how you deal with that. Maybe things that worked or didn't work on how you try and experiment, how that coming up with ideas, how that creative process moves forward and how you try and change it. And then maybe don't have all the answer, but inspire people and say, here's our take on things. Here's what we see happening. Here's what we do with that. And then move forward. And not having a, co a conference that says, here's the thing we're going to teach you. No, have a conference that says, you know, here's a really important thing for our industry to talk about. And let's just open up that question and then talk about this and then hopefully discuss with each other after. So also, therefore, I just want to sort of raise what some of the changes and transformation and global ideas around that creativity is, but not necessarily say, and here's the answer you're going to hear today, because I have no idea what that is. I do know there's quite a few superpowers, things that I'm really convinced that there will be very important, and I want to share you those sort of superpowers, because they're also guided into how we got to the speakers that are here today. One of them is curiosity, and I think a lot of people talk about how they, are, how they are curious and how they want to learn new things, and obviously you all want to learn new things because you're here. But quite often, especially within an organization, people will come to me and say, can I go to that event? Or, you know, I want to learn more, so can I buy that book? Can you buy me that book? A lot of people want to be taught rather than really learn something. And I really think that's an important point. I, people, I think people are not curious enough, and maybe they have a little bit of curiosity on their own, but I think you need to structurally organize your own curiosity so you make that a superpower, that you really turn into, I got to learn something new every day and almost like force myself to that. I do, not this presentation, but most of the presentations I do with clients or even, and especially all of those that I do in the agencies around the world will be end with a, a slide that says TIL, which is today I learned, um, not asking people what it is they got out of my presentation, but especially ask people that I want you to ask that question every day. At the end of the day, today I learned. And if you cannot name a thing that you say, here's something I didn't know before today, then you go listen to a podcast or open up a few websites until you come onto something that is new. And I think it will force you into be more curious and actually learn more things and they'll come more natively to you and try out new things. And it's something, as I said, when I sit, talk about structurally trying to do things, I try and do that for myself as well. Literally try and find by pulling out a newsletter every week forces me into saying, oh, I got to look into new things so I can feed in that newsletter and that helps me you know, feed my curiosity, uh, which probably is natively there, but it helps it structure a little bit. And I think it's really important that you find ways to be more curious than you were ever before. There's got to be a Steve Jobs quote in a creative presentation. Um, but Steve Jobs said, creativity is just about connecting things. And he talks about when people are, you know, as you see here, uh, a lot of people in our industry haven't had very diverse experience, so they don't have enough dots to connect, and they end up with very linear solutions without a broad perspective on the problem. With all of the transformation that is going on and all of the changes that is happening, I think that's why curiosity is so important, that you get more diverse experience, that you get a much more different input, because in the end of the day, it looks like we're all reading the same books and all going to the same conferences and all looking at the same awards to inspire us to then go do something different. That doesn't work that way. So you want to get more input and more connections in that. Collaboration. Collaboration sounds like a dirty word in the creative industry. I don't really know why. It automatically feels like this means 
A lot of people with post-its against the wall, or it means co-creative with the client, and that sounds really dirty, not something we want to do. And I think co uh, collaboration is essential. It's also why, um, for instance, 72 and Sunny or Forceman are here to present today, because they do have a different take on collaboration, on how clients and agencies together, or people within the agency, or experts or artists or whomever, um, very early on get involved in ideas and, and work on that together. We too much sort of look at it as a linear way of there's two people doing so and so, then hand it over to another person, and it ends somewhere uh, a very linear way, and I don't think that's right. I think we need to involve a lot more people more sooner. And there's diversity, which I think is a superpower. And not just because we need to be able to have a workplace where everybody has an equal chance to get a job, which is really important. But I think it also is important, and I think uh, Martin, at, uh, Martin Weigel at Wyden, um, who couldn't make it here today, but we have uh, Neil, CEO of Wyden and Kennedy in London, to replace him. But Martin recently said something about how the agency is not very representative of actually society. So the people that we have in the agency are don't really exactly represent the people that we sort of work for. And so we don't really understand those people because we're not the same, just so different. So we need that diversity also to make sure that we are a much more equal uh, organization in terms of how it represents society. Experimentation. I always said to clients, that I don't believe if you don't experiment for yourself, if you don't innovate a little bit in your own corner, in your own job, it is impossible for you to drive innovation in your organization. Innovation or experimentation are not expensive words. You cannot just talk about AI and code and data and all these kind of uh, theoretical concepts without trying to play out a little bit on your own. It's the same as with your kids, right? You're not, telling, you're not showing your kids Van Goghs, and et cetera, and saying, here is where you got to go to tomorrow. No, you give your kids crayons and a piece of paper, and then you just have a go and just do whatever it is, and then we'll see where that turns up. And I think that's a bit different thing. So an interesting experiment is when a guy says, you know, I'm invited to a business conference, and instead of doing a lecture like you usually do, I'll be doing a performance. It's a performance which we'll see later today, by the way. And especially on the internet, especially on the internet, experimentation is so powerful. I love this quote. I don't know who said it. Uh, it talks about the experimenting on the internet. It said, second you post on the net, if it works, it's a product. If it doesn't, it's research. There's no reason why we wouldn't experiment more online just because of how that thing works and how easy we can work with it. So experimentation is a superpower. So what I wanted to talk about today, and hopefully the speakers will talk and share those experiences, is literally about, if you think about this creative process, if you think about the creative machine, it's not really a machine, it's not really moving. There you go. You can turn off the audio, you. please. Number, please. You can turn off the sound, thank you. If you think about that rewiring the creative machine, you see I do a lot of effort to try and have a slide with actually some rewiring in there. Um, if you think about that, if you think about how you get to ideas, hopefully today you step out of this room and say, here's a few things that I hadn't thought about before, uh, I didn't know uh, was possible or um, that will inspire you, and hopefully tomorrow or next week when, when you go on and uh, deliver your own or build your own ideas, uh, you do things a little bit differently or try out things a little bit differently. So hopefully that is what today uh, will do, and hopefully we'll have a really great conversation about this in between the sessions and also after, and for those who are here tomorrow for the workshops, also on the workshops uh, tomorrow.